Glenn Sather had had a great quote when I was a player, and you know he was kind of giving it to us one night. He says, "I don't pay you guys to play. A lot of guys can play. Anybody can play." He goes, "I pay you to win," and that's a message that I've carried with me, you know, since I heard it. Billy G in the house, the Minnesota Wild general manager, joins us to discuss playoffs, extensions, expansions, and even some quick trivia on his career. And I get back on my no more shootout soapbox in this week's Up for Debate. As always, all of that and more presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Better Edge and State Farm Insurance agent Tony Hoagland at champlininsurance.com. This is episode 70. Gear up with the hottest merch in the state, courtesy of SodaStick.com. Snag a throwback Tony Oliva hitting school tee to celebrate baseball season, or keep the hockey vibes year-round with a plethora of on-ice merch. Be sure you're staying tuned to our social channels for a chance at a $50 SodaStick gift card giveaway. Bar Down Beauties at checkout will always get you that free shipping. Happy shopping. Hello, everybody. We're back. Episode 70. Not as nice as episode 69, but pretty damn nice anyway. Does it get nicer after that or less nice? How does the logistics of that work? Every day we're still alive is (laughs) That's my own. True. (laughs) Look at the power of positivity from producer Fred. That was just beautiful. (laughs) Beautiful. What's going on, everybody? We've got a lot to cover. Um, As we mentioned, Bill Guerin joining us to talk about expansion. Marco Rossi, some guy, Kirill Kaprizov, I guess we could discuss. Um, Let's dive right into that, shall we? Kirill Kaprizov, he is now the official rookie record holder for the Minnesota Wild, passing Marion Gabrick which is sad because that's the last time the Wild have had (laughs) a rookie that has produced like Kaprizov has. Um, And obviously he continues to be the front man of the Calder conversation. Which Louder for the people in the back, Jesse. For the record, you guys, (laughs) we completely support. I know we have so many wonderful, endearing fans in Russia who maybe are misconstruing (laughs) some of our translation. We love Kirill. We want him to stay here forever and ever and ever. And Literally forever. And <laughs> win the Calder. That is 100%. But we like to have discussions about other people, right? You got to yeah. have keep it interesting. Um, and Jason Robertson of the Dallas Stars is the one rookie as of late challenging Mr. Kaprizov. I think he's two points behind Kirill with yeah. 36. Kirill's got 38. Um, God damn it, Dallas. Just leave us alone, right? Like, I actually tweeted at the Locked On Dallas account because I was like, haven't you taken enough from yeah, us? Yeah, honestly. Like, what the hell? And he was like, I actually kind of feel bad about this. I'm like, you <laughs> Good. Um, but Alexis, I know you've been preparing your yes. Calder statement. Let's yes. hear it. Let me brush off my notes. Uh, court is in session. Uh, I prepare, prepare for this rant because I was genuinely angry this morning. We're recording this on a Friday, as we always do genuinely angry this morning that we are still talking about the fact that Kirill Kaprizov played so many games in the KHL and <laughs> he's not 19 he's 20 something in his mid-20s and yada yada and I think it's his he birthday looks this like week, he's 12 fact. by Thank the way you. though can yeah, we just first say by all, looks alone he looks like a rookie yeah the eye life. test he's under 18 for sure <laughs> um but yeah I was so angry that we are still talking about this because if you want to have a conversation about the guidelines to what makes somebody a rookie that's a different conversation I don't want to to talk about that right now we're talking about if Kirill Kaprizov deserves to win the Calder for his performance as a rookie in the NHL which he is and the answer to that is yes and Robertson is not giving him a run for his money do not be a victim to recency bias I don't want to hear it none of you knew who this guy was up until this week I did he not know literally shot was. out of nowhere because remember literally. Dallas was like dead forever yes. right like, like yes. what the hell like what like, happened I don't want to hear about it Kirill Kaprizov is going to win the Calder and that is that I don't care what Jason Robertson is doing right now and there's I, I've read articles on this and I've, I've kind of looked into all the stats of it and I still stand by what I said. It's not just me being a Minnesota Wild fan and loving Kirill Kaprizov. You look at the stats of it and it makes sense. to. And if you watch Kirill Kaprizov play hockey, he is the better hockey player. He has done more for this Minnesota Wild team and quite frankly deserves to be on people's heart ballots as well, which Jason Robertson does not. And I just think that, you know, they, people kept saying like, oh, well, you know, Robertson hasn't gotten as much playing time and the season was delayed for Dallas because of COVID. The Wild had a COVID outbreak. They also, I, I can't even, I'm so angry about this. this Everyone is like, watching YouTube, I want you to pay ah. attention to Fred and I. Make sure that this is a multiple angle thing because we're all just sitting in disbelief. I don't I mean, want to hear it. Kirill Kaprizov feel, is going to win the Calder. <laughs> I feel bad for your neighbors right now. I mean, you've got to start getting the broomsticks and bang on the ceiling. Oh my God. You know what I, though? I will say this though. All right, hear me out on this argument, okay? 
Jesse. I like that there is somebody that's challenging Caprice off though, because I think it wouldn't be fun if he just kind of ran away with it and then everybody could argue, oh, well, it was a weak rookie class and of course he won it, blah, 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 right? You like, know everyone would do that if the exactly, Wild did finally 100%. get a hundred percent. They would put yes. a little asterisk next to it and say, well, yeah, he had no competition. So I'm glad, because I thought Tim Stutzel would be the guy to yeah. really push and challenge him. Lafreniere maybe as well. And they haven't panned out like they were supposed to. He agrees. Hudson totally <laughs> agrees with me. He, he, he would, you know, he thinks Kirill needs to win, right? Hudson? Um, no, but I, so I'm glad at least there's somebody that's making it interesting. I don't think that Jason Roberts and I haven't watched enough of him. That's not probably fair. Right. And naturally we have our own animosity with the Dallas stars. I almost called them the Dallas North stars. Oh my God. How dare um, you? But <laughs> you want to talk about a rant. I know. But so, I mean, I, I'd like to maybe check in on him and see how he's doing, but yeah, it's, it's Krill's. It, there's no question about and it. I just want to say this as well, because this has been talked about as well. So I need to address this. People keep saying too, they're like, well, you know, the, the Dallas stars haven't gotten as much like overall attention in the media this year, yada, yada, yada. The Minnesota wild are, have been playing better. So they've gotten more, they've got more national games and all of this. And, you know, Kirill Kaprizov is being shown off on NHL media and, and whatnot more than Jason Robertson. Why do you think that is? Because he's more fun to watch because he's better because he's going to win the Calder. If Jason Robertson was as good as everyone keeps saying he is, then why is the NHL not talking about him more? It's not the Minnesota wild are so irrelevant to the NHL. If Kirill Kaprizov is getting them attention that, Oh, I can't, I can't. I love how people are complaining about Minnesota getting too much media. Like, what? <laughs> Thank you. Are exactly. You? I was, Oh my God. That's what I'm saying, Fred, because it's the Minnesota wild. Like that is the perfect example as to why Kirill Kaprizov deserves to win the Calder. If, if put the stats aside, the Minnesota wild who have just sunk from the media's attention in the NHL, he has somehow brought them back from the dead and made them a relevant team in the NHL. That is the case closed. I let don't us have Jason something. Ra- let us like, have something. Let us have something. My so God. sorry to my neighbors, but I'm not because Jason Robertson is irrelevant. And if he wins the call, I will literally vomit if Jason Robertson, wins you know the what I'm going to do. I'm going to bet right now. I'm going to go to betteredge.com. B E T T O R edge. Put some money down for me too, Jesse. Put the app in and I am going to place a bet on Kirill Kaprizov winning the Calder. If that's an order, I think I can create the order, which is fantastic. That's why we love better edge. They are awesome. Uh, uh, you guys should do the same. Come vote against me if you dare. I dare you to try to vote against Kirill Kaprizov and the Calder. I really the Russians do. will and be pissed. <laughs> the, yeah, so yeah. The Russians. You don't want to make you. the Russians angry. <laughs> no, please don't. Uh, so yeah, Better Edge. Obviously, go check them out. Completely legal betting, a fun social platform. We can chirp each other, enjoy uh, some good competition, and it's a locally based company run by some pretty awesome dudes. So give them a look. Use code Buttes for a free ten dollars. That's Better Edge. B e t t o r Edge dot com boom knock that one out i truly don't have much else for segment one either you guys i don't know about you i think that covers it i mean ryan hartman extension we're in a chat with bill garen yep. about uh very exciting for him i love the low cost i love the terms mm-hmm. um he actually went under his what his qualifying offer number would be so i mean that just kind of proves he wants to put some roots down he's bounced around mm-hmm. in his career um and he's proven effective to for the minnesota wild so bill kind of update us on that and the grittiness and then uh the only other thing, a seven-game homestand, Alexis. What are we going to do? It's We're going to be party. crazy, but we have 7 p.m. Yes. games. Yes, 7 p.m. games, which means we can go to bed at reasonable times. Uh, you get to be at the X, which is always fun. And then my favorite part is seeing everybody out on West 7, throwing around, eating at the restaurants, drinking at the bars. Um, always a good time, especially at this point in the season where, like, the season's winding down. The weather's getting warmer. No, today on Friday, the weather's crappy, but, like, it's supposed to be getting warmer. Um, where are you seeing a- this? Because I looked ahead and I – almost cried because I saw oh what weather it's yeah. supposed to be like 80 degrees like on snow Monday on Saturday again whatever what I you know what we can lie who are they what, what, who, like we know less than the weatherman I keep us factual and accurate Alexis <laughs> we need to start on beauty's weatherman that's what we're <laughs> no people yeah. hate weathermen like yeah, no, we, we don't job. want that. Don't we want don't that. want that associated weather with us. Yeah, <laughs> weather people. Weather um, people. Yeah, seven game homestand is awesome. The Wild have been great on home ice this year, and they haven't secured quote unquote secured a playoff spot yet. But like, it would take like the most. And Minnesota has seen some epic meltdowns, but it would take an epic Minnesota meltdown combined with some epic play from the players or the teams behind them for them nine not to Arizona, make the playoffs. Arizona would need to win nine straight and the in regulation, so they need to get their two points nine straight. 
and then Minnesota would need to not get any points for the rest. Of I have the a better chance well. of literally winning the lottery than Arizona winning nine games straight at any point ever. So especially not now. And that's just that on that. Just another bet that you can place at better. <laughs> B-E-T-T-O-R-E. Nailed it. <laughs> Boom. Uh, I say, I like this fire. This is like rare fire that we just don't throw out there very often. I like I this fire. Thank you. I'm trying to bring it. It's, it's the, it's the shirt. Maybe. I don't know. I'm feeling professional, yeah. feeling feisty. Um, yeah, no seven games. I mean, and it's St. Louis. We keep being seeing St. Louis. We didn't see him all year. Yeah. Now we're going to see him nonstop. So, uh, if you guys need me, I'll be at the XL Energy Center for the foreseeable future, which will be uh Yeah, bring up some luck, Jesse. Let's let's close this thing out. How about maybe it? I'll be sleeping sleepovers at Alexis's. Yeah, so that's what sleep, I'll have to slumber do. party. Bring your mm-hmm. bring your jammies. Oh god, no kids. <laughs> yes. Give me more. I do have a ghost though. So you lose the kids, but you get a ghost. So that's all right. I'll take it. Pick Fair your poison. <laughs> mm-hmm. The kid thinks there's a ghost in his room. Actually, it's mon- shadow monsters right now. Oh, so. okay. Maybe that's it's good. maybe it's the I same ghost in my apartment. Because, <laughs> because the inner part of me wanted to scare him and make a monster voice when he was like genuinely terrified. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm an awful parent, but I'm also tired and it's 2 a.m. And I think that'd be fucking alert. <laughs> Sorry oh, for the F-bomb. Oh my God. But uh, we're going to get to Bill Guerin talk more Minnesota Wild naturally and uh, even even buzz him with some trivia on his career. So we're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Want to rep some Bar Down Beauties merch? We've got you covered, literally. Whether you want to show that you're an official beaut or that you do not, in fact, support Chirping Duluth, we've got it all. So make sure you check out Bar Down Beauties on Teespring. Joining us now, the man we have largely to thank for this year's Minnesota Wild Squad has panned out. You know him as Billy G, a.k.a. it seems to be a fan favorite Wild General Manager, Mr. Bill Guerin. Bill, how are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for joining us. I mean, did you realize that you you are a fan favorite? Everybody seems to love you in the state of hockey. Not that we were surprised at all, but it can be some tough critics here in Minnesota. Yeah, that's nice to hear. It's uh, it's nice to be liked, I guess. You know, it's better than being hated. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it makes your job a little bit easier, I'm sure, huh? Uh, yeah, I get. Yeah, it does. I mean, uh. Like I said, it's just, it's nice to be liked. It, I guess it means you're doing something right or something that the fan base enjoys. And, you know, I, I definitely have a lot of help. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. And when the, when the players are, are doing their thing and winning, winning games, it, it makes all of us look good. So, right. um, you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of credit that I have to pass around for sure. And what a humble guy. We love to see that. I mean, now this could be the turning point of fans, I guess. The first question I'm going to throw right at you Dollar Bill Krill, Krill Kaprizov. Obviously, everyone's wondering how long can we lock him up for? How much money? I'm going to throw some numbers out at you. Eight years, 150 million. Does that sound right (laughs) up the right alley? Yeah. Yay. You know what? I'm I'm taking the suggestion box is full, (laughs) but um, that that we're we're working on it. Yeah. There are a lot of suggestions out there. It's just you know what these things they they just they take time. You know, and it's a big decision for. You know, it's a big commitment by the team, and it's a big decision for the player. It's, you know, there's a lot of things that, that go into it. Right, and obviously there's the cap space. Yeah. I mean, is it is it nerve-wracking, especially as you've seen how Kaprizov has panned out for this team and what he's meaning to this organization and all, you know, the rookie records that he's shattering and the good things he's doing? I mean, does that make you a little nervous heading into these conversations, knowing that it is an important piece to lock up and knowing that he deserves, you know, to get paid, but again, cap salaries and different things and other players that you also have to sign and in its expansion year as well? Um, you know, what is that like heading into those conversations with him and his agent? I, I think it's really important that you lay everything out on the table, like in, in you know, full disclosure on what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's basically a flat cap. So it's not just open checkbooks, checkbook season. It's um, where we want to make everything work so we can keep our team together. Um, you know, if you sign one contract that, that is kind of out of whack of what you're trying to do, then it can throw everything else off. So, there's a definitely a trickle down effect, but you want to be fair and you want to, you want to make sure that that guys are, are, are paid, uh, you know, fairly. And there's, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, you know, you can see with Ryan Hartman, he, he, what it seems to be a, a team friendly contract actually works out for both of us because you know what, we get a number that we like and he gets term. And that's a, uh, I think a good deal by both sides. So, you know, whether it's Ryan Hartman or Kirill or Eck or whoever, we try to make it so 
it works for everybody. I, I think that's the best way to do it. I don't need to win it. I don't need to win a, a contract negotiation or a trade or anything like that. I really don't. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it to be fair and to work for everybody. And I think I love that most about what you've brought to this organization from the very beginning. I mean, you do, you seem just to kind of get it and, you know, you've had patience. I mean, where did you learn that? Was that something you'd learned under Jim Rutherford? Is that something that you've learned from when you were a player? Or is it something that you've combined together in all of your experience to take that approach? Because it does seem to be very successful for the organization. Yeah, I, I think, well, thanks. And I, <laughs> I think um, a lot of it is, you know, the, the people that I did learn from, um, you know, Ray Shiro, Jim Rutherford, for sure. You know, Jim, Jim was, Jim taught me a, a great lesson. And, and honestly, it was, we were on a road trip to Minnesota, sitting in the St. Paul Grill and we were having lunch. And, um, you know, he gave me a great bit of advice and he said, never try to win a deal. Then he goes, if you always try to make a deal fair, you'll always have a trade partner. If you try to like, you know, screw somebody and try to like, just really like, just get that extra draft pick or get that extra, you know, team, that team to retain a little bit more money. He goes, they won't trust you going forward. And then you won't be able to make deals. And I feel it's that way. in, you know, in trades and in contract negotiations, I, I, I mean, I, I was kind of a pain in the neck as a player. I <laughs> held out twice and, you know, I, I have my, uh, my opinions on that, but um, you know, and I, I think I learned a lot from, you know, from my father too, who was uh you know, who, who was in, you know, in business and, and, you know, he, he just always wanted to treat people fairly and, and, and get deals done. So uh, I, I just, I got it from, from a lot of people. Well, and speaking of trades, uh, that was something that you chose not to do at the trade deadline. Uh, you made it very clear that you were taking calls, always willing to listen to offers, um, but you made no moves at the trade deadline. What did you like about this Minnesota Wild team that, that chose you, uh, that, that caused you to stay silent there? Yeah, it, it was just, you know, a feeling that I have, like, with, uh, with the chemistry of the team and, and talking to, uh, you know, the, the hockey ops guys around me, uh, talking to our coaching staff, you know, um, just kind of being around the team a lot this year. There's a good feeling, and um, I, I think we're good. And, and you know what, sometimes, sometimes if you make a move like that, it can, it can disrupt things if you bring the wrong person in. And I just feel like, you know what, this team's done such a good job. These players have done such a great job of, you know, adjusting and buying in and, and you know, getting us to where we are. Um, I mean, they're the guys on the ice that I, I really just want to give them a chance to, uh, uh, you know, to go further as, as a group. You know, naturally you can't, take this job and not have belief in your team and obviously you've been making the moves to create the success that the Minnesota Wild have seen this year but have they surprised even you a little bit I mean I know I don't want to put you on the spot because again I understand <laughs> as a GM you have to be back in your troops but I mean I know they've taken a lot of people a little bit by surprise by how well they're doing and you know it looked like maybe they'd be a bubble team after they had come out of the return to play so quickly but now it looks like they've solidified their spot in the playoffs and they could even make a run here have there been surprises on your end? No, you know what? No. And I, I've told that I, people have asked me that in the last couple of weeks. And I, I say, no, look at, look at the players we have. Um, I, I think what's happened here is that the expectation levels have been raised and as a team and as individuals and, and you know what? Uh, players were challenged and it's not just, you know, Glenn Sather, Glenn Sather had, had a great quote when I was a player and, you know, he was kind of, giving it to us one night he says I don't pay you guys to play a lot of guys can play anybody can play he goes I pay you to win yeah. and that's a message that I've carried with me you know since I heard it and I I delivered that message to our guys we're not paying them to play we can call anybody up and you know grab a guy out of college or junior or whatever and stick him in there he can play we're paying guys to win that's what you're here for so the expectations on the team and individuals has has gone up and the guys have delivered they've answered the bell so um no i i expect i expect this right well, you know do you think from now that you've gotten to know the guys again your first year it seemed like you sat back you had that patience you wanted to watch and see are you having some more of those maybe difficult conversations if you will saying hey you're not performing and here's what we need to do and again obviously a lot of that falls on head coach dean ebson and and him as well but i mean it does it seem a little bit easier to have those approaches and have those conversations with some of the guys that maybe are underperforming this season and, and not stepping up their game like they should be 
Yeah, absolutely. And being around the team helps me get to know these guys a little bit better. Um, first and foremost, I let Dino do his job and the coaching staff, and we, we discuss conversations that they have with individual players. Um, but, you know, I, I will grab a player from time to time in passing, and, and, uh, or if it's bad enough, I, I will schedule a, a sit-down. Um, <laughs> Just scare and, them really and, right out of their boots, yeah, like, oh, God, yeah. he wants to talk to us. Like Jared Spurgeon's yeah. daughter thought you were going to fire her dad, right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Or, you know what, and, and it's not always for that. And sometimes it's to tell a guy how, how, how well he's playing. And, you know, whether you bump into a guy walking out of the rink or walking in or going to dinner or whatever, it's, you know what, players need a pat on the back too. And there are a lot of guys in our dressing room that, that deserve a pat on the back. And, and uh, you know, but every once in a while, and I know because I was like this, Sometimes you need a kick in the ass too. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned Dean as well, uh, which has been something new this year, uh, taking off that interim tag and making him the the head coach. What have you liked about what's Dean done? What Dean has done with this team, and uh, does he deserve a, a big chunk of the credit for the success this team has had this year? Yeah, Dean, he deserves a ton of credit, and um, he's done such a fantastic job. And the, the one thing I really liked about Dean was his, was his experience. Everybody says, well, he doesn't have experience as a, as a head coach. And I said, no, because a lot of the other head coaches, when they were getting their coaching career started, Dean was playing in the NHL. <laughs> he's got that experience. But he's got experience in junior hockey, in the American League, and in the NHL as an assistant coach. So he, I feel like he can communicate to the younger players He's not afraid to play guys on call up. Um, he can, he understands what, what younger players and depth players are going through. And he's been around star players and, you know, I, you know, as a player and as assistant coach, he's been around, you know, I mean, he played with a guy like Ronnie Francis for years, you know, he coached a guy like Ovechkin for years in Washington. So he's got the ability to hit a lot of different levels with his communication and Dino's not afraid to make the, make the tough decision. And that's what I really like. He's just, you know what? Right is right. Wrong is wrong. And if you're not playing well, he doesn't care who you are. You you won't play. Mm -hmm. And if you're playing well, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to play and and he's going to set you up for success. Right. No, I agree. I think that's been something that every, all the wild fan base probably has been very grateful to see for a change. You do see a coach taking that charge. You had mentioned the youthfulness and I, I want to bring that up because that is a huge thing that Dean has experience with. And it seems like there's such a youth injection into this wild organization this year in particular, after having so many veteran players, I mean, there's a perfect balance, but I mean, did you obviously think ahead and plan that knowing that you had these future players coming in and these young guys and knowing that Dean has that capability to really cater to to that as well yeah we need it we need it you know and I I saw it uh firsthand when I when I was a player and I went to Pittsburgh what the young guys did for me as an older player and they just they give you energy they give you they give you life and it's you know as an older player sometimes you just you know you've been through it so many times before you start taking it for granted and you just you know you're you're a professional and you can get through any situation but then you get this you know, the, the young energy around you and the, the young legs and it pushes you in so many different ways. Um, and it's fun, you know, and, and it's, um, it's, it's something that we need to do and not be afraid of it. And you know what, change, change can be a, a scary thing, but it can also be really exciting. Right. Do you think that is something that Kaprizov has done? I mean, you look at guys like Matt Zuccarello and Victor Rask, who have clearly elevated their game, uh, just to name a few. I mean, is Kaprizov the main reason for that? Because it's like, hey, we got to get on this guy's level to help him out and come together as a team. Or is it a combination of just everything of the team winning and the new culture in the room in general? No, I, I think it's a combination. I think it's, you know, it, it's, it's not just, it's not just Kirill. I mean, you know, what? like, you know, Kevin Fiala is a young player. He's added some spark, you know, um, Dumba's a guy that, that I know he's been around for a little while, but he provides a ton of energy. You know, you get Carson Soucy, who's a young guy now and, and, and playing a big role. We've had guys come up from the taxi squad and, and given us, you know, you know, three, four, five, ten games, whatever, like Kyle Rao and, uh, you know, Joe Cramarosa, Luke Johnson. Those guys, have, those guys have provided us with such great energy and, and it's, just, it's just fun for the older guys to be around too. And you know what? I think like Zuki and, and Rasky, they, they see the opportunity that they have to, to play with this young, exciting player. It, it gets you excited. 
and yeah. and it motivates you. And you know what? They've, they've been a great line for us. Well, and you know, you mentioned the taxi squad. How hard has it been as a GM and just as a, a coaching staff and management to really assess these players in a season like this where there's pauses, there's delays, there's postponements? Uh, does it make your job harder to really figure out like what you have in front of you? Well, no, because the, I guess the on ice part is easy. Like it's, we all know what Kyle Rao does as a player, Luke Johnson. Joe Cramarosa, you know, Dakota Mermis. Um, we know what those guys are as players. It's, you know, you know, Andrew Hamm and all these guys that have been on our taxi squad all year long. It's how they're handling the situation because it's very difficult. You know, Brad Hunt, Brad's not on the taxi squad, but he doesn't get to play that often. How are these guys handling their, their day-to-day uh, situation? And to be honest with you, they've been nothing short of spectacular. And that shows the real character of guys. And that's what we want. That's what we're looking for. Character is a huge part of our player criteria. And, um, you know, not just for, not just for the big squad, but for, for everybody in the organization. You mean Brad Hunt, a positive energy? I have never, I would have never guessed, right? I know I had breakfast with him this morning and it's just like, you shake your head. You're like, is this guy for real? Like he is, he's the nicest guy in the world. He can't help but love him. I just, uh, he's, he's so wonderful. Um, you know, a guy that you haven't had a chance to really see, unfortunately, this year would be Marco Rossi. Um, I know he is over back home with his family in Austria dealing with some complications. How did you approach that situation and how unfortunate is it for him? And do you have any update on what we're looking at? I mean, I know last time we spoke about him, I believe he was set to be ready for training camp, obviously his health taking priority, but how is he doing and how's the communication been with him? Um, you know what? I haven't spoken to him personally in, in quite a long time, but um, the way I, the way we approach it was like, look, this is a this is a medical matter, and we're, we're going to do whatever is right for for Marco as, as a, a human being. Like, it, it, the hockey aside, we have to make sure that this kid is well taken care of and and healthy and all those things. So we we've let the doctors really make all the calls and handle it. I I, I mean that that's the only way to do it really. Uh, we had him scheduled to come over quite a while ago, but to tell you the truth, there was no real reason. Um, you know, we, he's got some qualified doctors over there that our medical staff is in touch with, you know, on a consistent basis. And, um, you know, we, we're just taking it kind of day by day, week by week with him. But I, he's, I think he's pretty much healthy. He's going to start training uh, in the next couple weeks and, and uh you know, and he'll start from there, but he's, he's still a, a player that's very important to us. You know, a young man that we, we, uh, we see a bright future for and, and uh, you know, but we'll, we'll wait till the, the time is right. Right. And I, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Cause it's funny. I practiced on my husband asking this cause I, <laughs> I know what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it. So, you know, you have a player like Marco Rossi who suffers complications from COVID and it's something that you don't realize until after they've gone through this Alex Stalock being another one. So the Minnesota wild yep. have seen this. Are there differences then when it comes to drafting players or making trades for players in regards to their medical health? Like say a guy like let's toss out JT Miller, for instance, say he suffer has COVID and he's suffering from complications. How do you handle that as GMs? You know, again, I know there's regular injuries and regular medical protocols. Is it the same or are there different things that then have to be accounted for in, in a trade or in even the draft coming up? No, first of all, you have to be, if you're dealing with a trade, you have to be completely honest with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if you're, if you're the GM acquiring the player, then you have to do all the due diligence you you can, um, you know, on the medical side. And then, you know, uh, weigh the risk factor. Are you, are you willing to, to take that risk and, and knowing that something could happen? Um, but it's, that, that's pretty much how it is. And, you know, with, with, uh, and it goes the same with the draft. You know, we, we find out everything that, that uh, you know, all the injury reports and medical conditions of these, you know, draft eligible players and things like that. And then it's just, hey, you, you've got, a, you know, the pros and cons and, the risk factor and all that stuff. And if you're willing to, to take that chance and, you know, sometimes if you have a couple extra picks and, you know, you want to take a flyer on a guy then then you can do it. But, um, you know, it depends on your situation and, and what you believe in. 
a couple well, extra picks. You got the team set up in a prime <laughs> spot this year heading into the draft. How much are you looking forward to this draft class? What can we expect from this draft class? I know it's not quite the same as years past, but obviously when it came to the tra- trade deadline, you were very adamant that you were not going to get rid of those uh, first rounders. What are you thinking heading into that as it starts to approach here a little bit? Yeah, we're excited. Um, you know, we have five, uh, five picks in the first three rounds and, uh, you know, we're, we're just excited about that part of it. I, I know Judd Brackett's been, been working, uh, you know, pretty, pretty much uh, as, as soon as he could almost all year and, um, you know, doing what we can, uh, you know, in, in, in Canada, even though, you know, the Ontario League uh, uh, hasn't been playing. But we're, we're doing everything in our power to know these players as well as we can, including video scouting, which isn't ideal, but we're doing what we can. And I, I, I'm really comfortable with, um, with you know, what we're going to be able to do and, and who we're going to be able to get and that we'll know them uh, as, as well as anybody. Well, before we get to the draft, we have to get through the playoffs, which I know a lot of Wild fans are very excited about, uh, being that the Wild have had some misses in recent years, first round exits in recent years. You're excited about this Wild team. You made it clear that you're comfortable with this team by making no moves to the trade deadline. What can Wild fans expect to see out of the Wild in the postseason? Are we, are we going to see, finally, a long playoff run from this team? Well, that's what we're hoping for. Um, you know, we, we know we're going to play a good team, uh, but we have to be – we have to be ready for it. We have to be ready to, um, you know, the level we're playing at now, we, we just have to be able to, who's that guy? <laughs> that's Hudson. <laughs> Hanging out. He, he, he's big that's into hockey awesome. guys. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, uh, no, we have to raise our level of play. And you know what? Our level of competitiveness and our level of uh, passion and emotion um, yeah, it, it, we have to. Where we are right now isn't going to be, uh, is isn't going to be. Um, it's not going to be good enough. We have to raise our level of play when we get to the playoffs. That's that's just what it is. Well, I mean, when you think about yeah. well, when you think about that happening, you look to your leaders to do that. Uh, one of those being Jared Spurgeon. How good has he been as his first in his first year of captaincy of this Minnesota Wild team? I don't think anybody doubted him, uh, but it has been so fun to see how good he has been as a captain. Uh, what have you seen from him in that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's been great. Um, I think maybe at the beginning he was putting a little too much pressure on himself, <laughs> and and you know that 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 happens, and it's. Um, it's, it's tough not to do that, but I think he's really settled into the role. And, you know, his play on the ice is, you know, just – it's been great. He's just so reliable. He, he does he does everything right. You know, it's not – you know, no, there's no perfect players, but <laughs> Jared, Jared's a very good player. And, uh, um, you know, he, he's, he's always there for us. He's very consistent. There's, there's never really a night where you say, you know what, Spurge was off tonight or anything like that. It, very seldomly you say that so um yeah he's been great another guy that I think is going to obviously be of utmost importance come the playoffs Mr. Cam Talbot a a guy that you have said very brazenly he's our number one goalie and it certainly has seemed that way I mean it was great to have the split but he has just been phenomenal is this everything that you had intended for him to be when you had signed him to that contract in the offseason yeah he's been even more he's been better uh you know what he's been just great. He, he just like, kind of like Spurge, he's been very reliable. Um, there, there are not many nights where you say that this guy was off. Uh, he makes the saves he should make he, and he steals a couple along the way, you know, um, and, and Cam is, Cam is a person is just like the highest character guy. He, he's, he's very, very professional. I mean, um, you know, he's in such, he's in great shape. He's prepared every day you know, whether it's practice or game or backing up, whatever it is, he, he's just a true professional. And, um, you know, I think him and Capo have been awesome together. I, they have a good relationship and um, they, they know, they know where each other stand and, and they support each other. And, and Capo, you know what, Capo has really stood, you know, he's taken this opportunity and just run with it. And it's been great. So um, yeah, it's, it's really a luxury to have. It's nice. 
Yeah, you know, you mentioned the Capo Cam situation and going back to the expansion this year, that does that make it a problem for you? Like, who do you protect? Which goalie? We talked about this with Pioneer Press's Damian Zatani and Michael Russo last week. And all of us are kind of like, I don't know. It's a tough call. I mean, how hard of a decision is that going to be for you as far as who do you protect and who do you expose? Yeah, it'll be uh it'll be tough. We'll we'll see. We'll see what we do. I mean it's uh it's a good problem to have, I guess. I suppose. One you're not looking forward to though. I mean you're trying to forget <laughs> no. about it right now. No, yeah. Um, I'm gonna you know, carp- yeah, yeah. Carp- yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna push that off a little. <laughs> That's fair. You got other things to worry about, like the playoffs. I mean, you look at the Minnesota Wild in the Honda West division. Um, do you think that they are poised to go on a run in this thing I mean right now everyone knows Colorado is Colorado right but every team has a weakness and and can be exposed and Minnesota has won a couple do you think that uh the wild are poised to go on a deep run this year and and really make themselves known well you know what we're no different than anybody else we're gonna try and we're gonna we're gonna do what we have to do to win and um like I said before we're gonna play a good team in the first Mm -hmm. round no question about it. We're playing a good team. But um, that's why we play the games. You know, you can't just look at a roster on paper and say, oh, you know, we're, we're screwed. We got to go out and play the games and we'll see how it goes. And, you know, I think to me, like the important thing is the expectation level and, and the compete level. And, and like I said, you know, just a minute earlier is we have to raise our level of play. Mm-hmm. And you know, you don't get to pick your opponent. You don't get to, you know, pick your spot in the, in the, in the uh, standings. You have, you have to earn it and uh, we'll do what we have to do, but we're, we're no different than anybody else. Yeah. We, we want to go on a run and uh, we'll see what we're able to do. Would you rather Vegas? Maybe just a little bit. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not answering that. <laughs> yeah. Don't, that's a dangerous thing to try to pick your opponent. Be yeah, careful what right. you wish for. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Nope, I like that. Yeah, we're going to get, we're going to, we're drawing a great team. We know that. (laughs) Well, Jesse, should we fire off our uh, quick questions for him? See what he knows about his own playing career? Let's do it. And you know, the segue to this, because I pride myself on my segues, Bill. I I love them. (laughs) Uh, Patrick Marlowe, obviously passing Mr. Hockey, Gordie Howe for most games played the series in the Honda West. Very great of the Minnesota Wild to honor him tying that game. Sounds like tomorrow night, San Jose will be honoring him getting the full on record and he's still going. Um, I'm sure you know, Patty quite well. (laughs) How many games though, did you play and where does that rank on the all-time list in the NHL? Oh, I think I played <laughs> 1,267. Oh, you were close. 263. You so close. Oh, I gave myself a couple extra. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you you okay. felt like you were giving it. yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where do you think that ranks on the uh, the all-time list? It's it's pretty good. Uh, I was I, actually pretty impressed. Yeah. I, oh, God. I don't know. I, I have no clue. I honestly have no clue. Number number 81 you're in the top 100 oh all right oh (laughs) great 81 yeah Yeah. i think that's pretty good i mean when you sit back and yeah yeah is it remarkable that patrick has played this many i mean even for you you know what it was like to play 1200 plus games imagine yeah he's like played like 500 games more than me (laughs) yeah it's, it's unbelievable it really is so let's talk about goals for a second you're eighth in all time goals by an american player can you name the top five in that list? Uh, yes. No. <laughs> the top five. You don't have to do it in uh, order. We, just if give you us okay. five. Yep. Yeah. Joey Mullen. Mm-hmm. Mike Madonna. Yep. Keith Kachuk. Pat LaFontaine. And um, Red Hall. And JR. And JR. Wow. That was good. We won't tell wow. him that you forgot him. I don't think you take that too well. <laughs> that was, yeah, you even got Pat LaFontaine in yep. there. So yeah, that's pretty yep. impressive. How fun is it to have Mike Madonna on your staff and just be able to kind of oh, reminisce awesome. and hang out with, uh, with that guy? He's, yeah, he's awesome. We have a lot of laughs, that's for sure. It's, <laughs> it's um, you know, it's kind of like I, w- I wish it was a normal year because we could have him around more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's great. It's great having him back in hockey. And I, I love having him with us. Like it's, and we do, we have a lot of laughs and the, you know, I mean, we've known each other since we were 18 yeah. and uh, playing in the world juniors together. And, and yeah, it, 
we've we've been through a lot together so it's awesome having him he doesn't invite you out to his Arizona home to hit some golf balls or anything or like that. Hit the twins or anything, yeah. <laughs> or any of his five kids. Yeah, uh, he's, he's not hitting golf balls. He's changing diapers. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Yeah, I had them. my I had my kids young. He's got his <laughs> late work completely flip flop. <laughs> That's too funny. And then kind of final question about your career because I thought this number impressed me. How many penalty minutes did you have in your entire career? Uh, One thousand six hundred. 60. Dang, wow. look at you. So you knew that one. Huh? That's <laughs> yeah. Gave himself a few more games than NHL, but knew the penalty yeah. minutes right on the dot. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so you know the importance of being a gritty player. Is that a big reason we had mentioned Ryan Hartman? Is that a reason that you looked at him as an extension? I mean, he's proven himself as a winger, as a centerman, and, and really done a great job this year, but he's also got that grittiness and yeah. that feistiness. Is that why uh, you looked at this and said this is a good deal? Yeah, I, re I really like that about Hartsy. And, um, you know what, I, I think there has to be, my belief is that everybody's got to have some sort of grit in their game. And that, that's a different meaning. Mar Marcus Foligno and Ryan Hartman's grit is much different than uh, Caprizov's or Zuccarello's. But those two guys have grit. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not afraid to go into the traffic. They're not afraid and you know, 50, 50 puck battles and things like that. They're not going to fight or, you know, throw big hits or anything like that, even though Kirill has, done that a couple <laughs> times. but they, they play with a certain amount of grit. So even, even like your high skill guy, Kevin Fiala has got grit. Mm -hmm. So your high skilled guys have to have some sort of grit and, and toughness and, and high compete. So um, I love that about Hartsy though. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy about that deal. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I love it. We'll get to bug you about that in just another 30 minutes. So I'll be back on to say hi then. Uh, but we'll let you go rest the voice before the media comes at you once more. So thank you again, Bill, though, for joining us. I'm excited to see uh, what the next couple months have in store for the Minnesota Wild. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. This was fun. This yeah. is great. You're an official beaut. Congratulations. It's Congratulations. Been oh, thank true you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, this is producer Fred. I just want to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review, you name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app. We're back. Shout out to BG for joining us. Uh, gosh, he's just, he's great. He's just so yeah. like friendly and approachable. You forget that he's also like a hockey legend, which is yeah. kind of fun to, uh, to toss his way. And he's just a humble guy. I mean, I think we've said it time and time again, and we told him time and time again, mm -hmm. like, I love his approach to the game yep. and the organization and this team. So very grateful to Mr. Bill Garrett for joining us. It was awesome. Yeah, we, it's, it's so nice, especially in a hockey community that understands hockey so well to have somebody be so transparent with the fan base and with media. I mean, it just, it makes things so much easier and it's, it's fun to talk with somebody who's willing to tell you what he's thinking and what he's, you know, what he's doing and what he wants to do. And Bill Guerin does all of those things. And so we, we wanted to get him on the podcast for a while. So nice to finally get him on it and talk some wild hockey. And I love to hear that he's not that busy. So we're yeah. going to bring him, him on next week. <laughs> number dialed. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have him on anytime. So uh, let's get to this week's up for debate, which is it's basically just Alexis. I'm yeah. just going to let you go <laughs> on your soapbox. It's absolutely it, just a rant. It's just that Alexis needed a time to rant. Yeah. Again, we're time in shootouts. <laughs> Alexis, let's hear the up for debate and what you what you selected. Well, we had to do it right. Like I went on it an unsolicited rant the other day. This is now a solicited rant. And um yeah, I mean, it's it's something to talk about because it has changed over time and it is interesting to see what people think about overtime rules. And uh, so we asked you guys what you thought about overtime and games ending in ties and what you would want uh, with the options being just end the game in a tie either after regulation or after overtime do an extended overtime or multiple OTs or stick with what we've got now, which is where the game ends in a shootout. Um, and I would say most people fell under the multiple OT category, which is also what I would fall uh, under. And I, I would say extend overtime now instead of going right to multiple OTs, like extend it to like eight or maybe even 10 minutes. I know 10 might be a lot, um, but I guarantee you that would fix a lot of problems. If you still do not have a winner after that, which I guarantee you, you will get more than going to a shootout 
ended in a tie. I've decided I want to go back to ties. If we do not have a winner in OT, I am fine with ties. Yes, I said it. Yes, I stand by it. I'm willing to <laughs> die on this hill. Please let, and speaking of things dying on hills, let the shootout die, please, because I am so over it. I am ready to go back to ties if games do not end in OT, but first extend the OT. So that's my rant. I went on a rant about it last week or two weeks ago. That's my final say because everyone's like, you want to go back to a tie? Yes. Yes, 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 I do. But extend OT first. Jesse, what are you what is your take? <laughs> I love extended OT idea, first of all. Like I really I, I do. I think it's fun to let the guys play it out within reason, right? Because yep. it has to end at some point. I'm not gonna sit my ass up in that press box for five hours. <laughs> During the regular season, yes. <laughs> yes, you know, it's just too much. Um there is some I wouldn't say I I don't like ties though. Yeah, I just I'm not a tie person. I don't want it to just end it's even though you like way. the shootout. It's not, no, Fred, yes. Fred. It's not the American because, way. Only because I think the shootout can be very dazzling. Like I do love to see that one on one. I mean, sometimes it's just it's fun to watch and you don't get nearly enough of them during the games anymore, right? Players are smarter than that sure. than to trip up somebody going in for a shot. So I think sometimes it's nice to see the shootout. So I would yeah, I would like to extend the overtime a little bit and make that longer before a shootout, but still have a shootout as a last resort as you need to in the regular Heavy season. Heavy Cause again, side. I mean, keep in mind, you guys, you can play overtimes and playoffs and that's yeah. great and exciting. You're not gonna yeah. have a shootout decide it, which is exactly what I wouldn't want to see. Yeah. Right. But I think yeah. in the regular season, it's kind of nice just to have it end with a clear cut winner and you can see a Ryan Rolston slap shot. <laughs> yes. I'll go back to that. Cause it's still my favorite. Or you can get pissed about a uh, Ryan, Ryan Johansson, Johansson near, which he's done. He did it that. again this year. I know he did. Oh, but it was You're against Detroit. So it was okay. <laughs> um, no. Okay. But seriously, I, and I do understand like, you know, it is regular season. You cannot have 50 OTs in the middle of the week and have yeah. them go play a game two days later. That's right. part of what makes the playoffs so fun. And I wouldn't want to bring that into the regular season anyway, because that is what makes the playoffs special and yeah. unique and different and so exciting. Um, and I understand that the fatigue factor would kick in if you've got guys playing a million overtimes a week. So I, I my, mean, injuries would go up and up it would just be terrible. Yeah. yeah. Like the reasonable side of me that doesn't show itself very often understands that in this argument. But at the same time, I just have so much hatred for shootouts that I just, something needs to change or the wild just need to get better in shootouts. Maybe that's part of the problem. I, don't I know. mean, there's that too. Cause you do hate to <laughs> see a guy help. go down and you're like, Oh, what yeah. was that? Like, I mean, sometimes I think it seems almost too easy. Like, yeah, I feel like I could do it. I know I can't. I will tell you all. I know I cannot. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. I think you maybe could, Jesse. <laughs> I think you maybe could. <laughs> I would look like Johansson not on purpose though, because I would end up having to stop because I can't shoot it while I'm moving forward, and it would right, just right, it, yeah. it would be a sight. But maybe that's it. Maybe the Minnesota Wild have put to Jesse have in the shootout. And I in the shootout, we each I changed my team. mind. I'm back yeah. on the shootout train. I want to watch Jesse in the shootout. If Jesse he could make every shootout shot in the NHL, I'm back on that like train. The, God, <laughs> MTJ Oshi. Of, I'm just gonna uh, say, I I need to see if they're gonna just have like shootout specialists. <laughs> please bring Chris Stewart back. Yeah, I yes. just want to see Chris Stewart and his shorty yeah. like somehow just sniping a goalie. It was it was the best thing. It was like, why is he so good at this? I yeah. think we should bring Chris Stewart back. Period. But also for Fred's <laughs> for reason. every reason. You know, I think we should yeah. get Chris Stewart on the podcast. Chris, yeah, Chris, if you're listening, hi. check your emails. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're working on it, Stewie. We're working on it. Um, but that's gonna do it for this week's episode again thank you to bill garen thank you to aaron sickman for helping us coordinate that interview as i know it's he's a busy man whether he wants to admit it or not (laughs) so that's a big shout out to pr for always hooking us up with the with the gems um shout out to better edge as we're brought to you by don't forget to use code buttes for a free ten dollars and place your bet on whatever sport is your niche obviously hockey i would recommend (laughs) um stay tuned we're working on some really fun stuff with better edge where you get to play against yours truly and bet because you know, I hate losing. So let's do it. Um, also shout out naturally to our presenting sponsor. So to stick, we're actually going to hear from Landon coming up as he has a new venture in a, uh, good goons type of adult league play. So that's going to be very exciting. Stay tuned to all of our social channels for more information on that. And bar down beauties. will get you free shipping on all purchases there. Also Tony Hoagland, shout out to him, state farm insurance champlain and uh, shout out to all of you guys for listening and talk North. I can't forget talk North for letting us on their 
lovely, lovely uh, network. And the show. Russians. And the yeah, Russians. Shout out to the Russians. Russians we, we know love you're watching. You. We love we you. Love, <laughs> we love Kirill Kaprizov. There's never been any doubt. We're really, really sorry if you think we don't. Um, I'll, I'll take the lower class. Sure, I am a little low class, so that's fine. It's, I, I'll admit it. That directed at me. I get it. At least uh, they keep saying that you're pretty girls. That, that, that has yay. been a common thread oh. through the comments. That's She's good. Thank Fred girls. is transcribed. Yes, he is. Fred he is, is pretty too. Can the, the Russians stuff. give Fred more love in the comments, please? <laughs> And we are all in on Kirill. He, please don't, <laughs> please don't take him away from us. Please let him stay here. Uh, that's going to do it again for this week. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, like all the good stuff. Um, certainly sauce us your questions anytime. Go check out our YouTube for the YouTube exclusive cues with the buttes also this week. And uh, that'll do it. Have a good one.